Sorry, so I can say. Okay, no, Kalisa.
Hello everyone. Good evening. Before we start with the today's event, the third day of our United Minds Expo 2022, I hope everyone has read the news today. Yes, when you woke up early in the morning today, there was a heartbreaking news that was displayed in the television, if you have seen. Yes. Carve your hearts, carve your name on hearts, not tombstones. A legacy is etched into the minds of others and stories they share about you. Legendary Indian playback singer, noted for her distinctive voice and vocal range that extended over more than three octaves. Her career spanned nearly six decades and she recorded songs for the soundtracks of more than 2000 Indian films. So we, the Science Kids community, offers the heartfelt condolences to the greatest singer of all time, the Nightingale of India, Lata Mangeshkarji. So I would like everyone to keep a two minute silence before we start a third day of our event. Okay, so before we start with today's event, I would like to summarize what we have done in the second day of our exhibition. There were 11 projects that were displayed, so I'll be summarizing all the 11 projects and I'll even announce the winner of day two, the most liked project by the audience. So there were two projects that was that was liked by the audience. So I'll even, dis, I'll even announce the name of those two projects and the kids who have received that award for day two of our event. Even today, the teams will be performing. There are nine projects and the project getting most number of votes by the audience will be the winner for day three of our event. Before we start with day two, I'll summarize the day two projects that were displayed. So here are the list of projects that were displayed on day two. The first project was Intel Evol. The problem statement was unable to operate home appliances manually. And our student, Divit Bansal, came up with a solution of voice enabled smart wall. The second project was candy serving robot. Fun fact, it was basically used for entertainment, but they had a hidden problem which they had focused on. So the fun factor was robot coming to serve candies at events and parties. The technology they used was wireless technology or wireless robotics. So they used to control their robot wirelessly. The third project was IoT garbage management system, which was presented by our student Saina Joshi. 
the problem statement that she stated was cleanliness issue in dumping areas we have seen so much of garbage littered near your garbage bins so she took that as a problem statement and she came up with a solution iot enabled dumping grounds as soon as your garbage bins are filled the responsible person gets a notification that the dustbin has been filled the garbage bin is filled you need to clean it up so this was the project by saina joshi the, th the next project was voice controlled safe by siddhant lahori to prevent he took the problem statement as virus transmission at public lockers you might have seen there are public lockers people using public lockers or say for atm kiosk so if you use that atms and all using a finger sensor or a keypads what happens is there are chances of the infection getting contagious or being spread it to other people so he came up with the solution instead of touching those atms or safes what he came up with this he came up with a voice controlled safe unlocking mechanism yes so using a bluetooth device he can control the safe kavish karwat and risha sha they took a problem statement reducing load lifting issues in warehouses in warehouses you might have seen people carrying sacks on their backs picking up bricks on their heads so this causes too much of injuries so risha and kavish came up with their idea of co bot cooperative bots okay which looks like a robotic arm so instead of using a human arm they came up with a robotic arm to pick and place goods smart farming by param soni and kushal agarwal so the problem statement was manual labor done by farmers the solution they came up with instead of the old school farming they came up with a robotic machine or a mechanism for various farm operations like cutting harvesting putting up water where the soil is dry so that it can be more fertile so they came up with a robotic mechanism next gen temple by neil mistry he also took this covid protocol a bit seriously and the problem statement what he took was the virus transmission at temples basically he took virus transmission at crowded places so one such place was temple yes so using his touchless system installed at temples he could prevent this infection to be contagious or it can spread to other people traffic rider by divya mehta and kushal jain these two kids were fond of playing games so they took playing games as a fun factor and they made their very own game using a programming software called as mblock so they used a platform where they created their own game so they even play games while learning it in a fun way bluetooth key finder by sans putran and avni daga so the problem statement was wastage of time while searching for keys like suppose if you misplace your keys so it takes time to find out the keys where you have lost it where you have kept it so instead they came up with a solution of bluetooth enabled buzzing keychain so they made a keychain which they will connect it to the keys so in case the keys get lost or if you keep it somewhere where you don't remember where you had kept it using your mobile phone remotely you can check where your key where you have misplaced your keys or where your keys have been fish feeder by jash ashar darsh parekh and dhir nainkar so they took the problem statement as forgetfulness when it comes to feeding fish i hope everyone knows everyone keeps pet okay not everyone some of them are fond of pets the pet can be a fish it can be cat it can be dogs so using this forgetfulness like when they understood that i forget to give food to my pet dog or pet animal anything so they came up with a solution of microcontroller based automatic feeding system so at certain intervals the microcontroller would feed the pet animals at certain intervals like suppose if you keep a timer of 4 hours or after every 3 hours the fish or any animal to be fed it so they had made some mechanism like after every 3 to 4 hours the food needs to be dropped at the drop to the animal or given to the animal 
the last one for the day two pro the, for the day two exhibition event was text orator for blind. The problem statement what they took was blind person reliance on others. Like blind people, they need to be reliable to the secondary person so that they are able to see they are they are able to visualize or understand what's in front of them. They need a secondary person to make them visualize all those things. So our student care of Shah came up with a very good solution of computer vision based smart device. So he had made a device which had camera attached to it. So if you keep any text in front of the camera, the camera will detect the, that particular text and it will convert that text into speech or audio. And from the speaker, the audio will be given out. So these were the 11 projects of day two of our exhibition. And out of these 11 projects, two projects received the highest number of votes by the audience sitting and watching their projects. So the two projects that came or emerged as a winner for event two by the audience were first one is the text orator for blind. The first project was text orator for blind by Kerav Shah and the second project The second project was Next Gen Temple. The second project was Next Gen Temple. So these two projects were the winner for the day two of our exhibition. So every day we'll be having one or two winners based on the audience voting. How they find it, how was their idea, whether their presentation was good, whether they were able to all, whether they were able to answer all those questions asked by the audience. So seeing these factors, they have voted the top one or top two projects of the day. So I hope today also we'll be launching poll once we finish up presenting all the nine models of the day, nine projects of the day. And at the end, once we finish presenting all the nine projects, at the end, we'll keep up a poll where you can vote and select the best project for the day. So on day four, on like next week, we'll be announcing the best project of day three. Yes, so we have nine projects lined up today. First one is energy saving classroom. Then we have firefighting robot. We have automatic street light. The fourth one is Insta care alert. We have touchless lift. We have car security system. Then we have mobile theft detection, women safety, and the last one is smart dustbin. So we have these nine projects lined up today. So everyone stay tuned so that you don't miss any of these exciting projects for the day. Since I'm a teacher, I face one big problem. That is, I don't remember to turn off my lights once I finish my sessions. So we have two of our students. Devya Trivedi and Malik Mehta, who came up with the solution for this particular problem. They have created a project called Energy Saving Classroom. So let's hear it from them, what this Energy Saving Classroom actually is. So over to you, Devya and Malik. Hello, my name is Devya Trivedi and I'm Malik Mehta and this is our electronic classroom. In today's era, where everybody is talking about energy saving and automation, we thought of implementing the same to our classroom. This will make our classroom interesting, fun, and easier than before. We have made this classroom by help of IR sensors, Arduino Nano, battery pack, and code. There are 14,94,052 schools in India and they typically waste a quarter of the energy. So, we have made a smart classroom with sensors placed on the entry and exit of the classroom that counts the number of students, teachers or any other staff member that enter the classroom and automatically switch on and off the light. This prevents both. The light, uh, this, this prevents the light from being on the whole day and night and, and saves both energy and money. This is our classroom brought to life. Now, there we will demonstrate. Yeah. 
As you can see, this is our electronic flash. There are two sensors based on entry and exit. This is first eye sensor on entry. This is second eye sensor on exit. Now, if you see uh, inside, we have Arduino Nano flash light here, light PCB, and a battery pack outside. Now, I will show you how does it works. If one student or any staff member is going in from the entry, the first person went and the light is turned on automatically, as you can see. And second person student went, third went. Now, they are coming up, as you can see. First came out, the sensor has marked. The second came, and the third came. And the light, will, light has turned off automatically. So this is our classroom which is got alive and hope you like it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So very well explained, Devya and Malik. So you gave me a solution for wasting electricity or saving energy after the class gets over. Yes. So once there are no students or no trainers inside a classroom automatically automatically the lights the fans turns off the also basic the, yes, the basic electronics what we need the fans ac or the led lights so the basic things can be turned off so that energy is been saved or preserved very good molik and devya so you have taken a very good problem statement yes now, from the audience, I give you 30 seconds. I'll turn on the chat. I'll give you 30 seconds to put up your suggestions, to put up your reviews. And if you have any queries related to this particular project, you can just let me know. Okay, so there is one question by Sanj Putra. She says, what happens if the class has only one entry and exit? If the class has only one entry and exit, so we can place the IR sensors inside the classroom and outside the classroom. We have two gates right here, one entry and exit, but a class, normally classrooms has only one entry. So we can put one IR sensor out and one at one IR sensor inside the class. So the IR sensors can uh, sense and the light fans and the AC turn on and off automatically. If the first IR sensor detects the person first, that and that means the person is entered. And if the uh, the IR sensor inside detects the uh, detects first, that means the person is exit. Uh, that means the person uh, is exiting. So it will automatically switch on and off the lights. Okay, so we have Soumya Dalal here. He has a question. Yes, Soumya. Soumya, uh, your voice is not audible. Can you hear me now? Yes, Soumya. Like in this COVID situation, as we know that the students are coming in half of quantities, half students on Monday and half students on Tuesday. So if there are only five to six students, then and classroom is very big. We have four to five lights and four to five fans. So like it would be waste to waste electricity if we start all of them. Yeah. 
uh, it will be a waste of energy if we just track all of them. But we can put some sensors above the classes and we can see the students which are sitting under the first row, if you want. If you see in the classroom, there are rows. So the student sat on first bench on first row. Then the uh, fan above him can turn on and off. Or, or we can do like as we enter the classroom, the IR sensor counts the number of students and other uh, and the members that enter the classroom. So we can put the coding line. If there are five five students counted, then only two lights will get switched on. Like this, less energy will get wasted. Thank you. Thank you, Soumya, for having such a wonderful question. One question from Arav Khandol here. It says, if it is morning, yes. so most of, so mostly no one want to turn on lights. But if someone enters the class, lights will start. So it would be waste of energy. Okay, in mornings, as you say, there are lights. So if someone enters, it would be a waste of energy. You can see in today there are um, there are whiteboards like. Uh, from the projector, they share the screen in the whiteboards. So, if the windows and doors are open, then we are not able to see it clearly. So, if we close the windows, then we need light to switch off. Otherwise, we will be not able to see that. And in the classroom, usually there are small windows. It does not allow much light to enter the classroom. So, according to our project, the this uh, this project will prevent uh, less light from coming in, uh, from coming in. And also, see, uh, windows are on one side and the benches are also at other side. So the first row uh, cannot uh, get light. So uh, the benches near the windows are only able to get the uh, light energy. Yes, Arav has one more doubt, I guess. Sir, I don't have doubt. I I knew the question, but I was checking if they knew. You should uh, have answered like that. Uh, you you can insert a switch if we turn on. Means if we go in, so it will detect when we go in. But we just have to turn on the switch. So can, you can also do like that. Okay, thank you. Suggestion. We can also add some kind of this. Things and uh, thank you. Thank you, Arav, for such a wonderful suggestion. Everyone else, you can also provide suggestions like Arav so that our young minds can implement in their project so they can have more advancements in the same. Yes. Yes, Trivedi has raised his hand. So yes. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this was indeed a very nice project, but uh, I just wanted to know that have you worked out any cost factor for the same? Cost factor for the same. Yes, we can have cost like if uh, cost on uh, building the things. For coding and uh, many more things. If we are then attaching things in the classroom, then also we need uh, many things, um, long wires and like that. So we have not decided the price like that, but we will uh, see. But as usual, the switch when they are connected to the lights and ACs and these IR sensors detect it costs the same. So it will. Um, it will make not much of a difference. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir, for such a wonderful question. Not only on the technological side, but also on the financial side, the kids need to know. So thank you, Mitesh, sir, for having such a wonderful question for our kids. Okay. So we are putting up a Google form in the chat box. So that the questions can be asked to the kids through the forms. Yes. Not all questions can be addressed at a particular time. So we have opened up a Google form. So you can just fill in the form. 
and put in your queries and questions. The poll is here for the project. The poll is here for the project one of the day three event of Ignite and Minds Expo 2022. First project by Molik and Devya. Energy saving classroom. The poll is here. So how did you like the project? Whether their concept was good, whether their project model, whether their presentation or all of the above. And how do you rate this project? Good, excellent, legendary. Arav, if you have any doubts or any queries, you can put it in the Google form. We have eight more projects to go for the day. So we'll give you a chance. Don't worry. Okay. Last 15 seconds for the poll. Okay, so that was our first project, Energy Saving Classroom by Devya and Malik. So we have eight more projects to go for the day three of Ignited Minds Expo 2022. Let me tell you something. A firefighter is responsible for evacuating people belongings, etc. safely from a house that is on fire. Many times firefighters also get injured while doing this. They get small burns on their fingers or on their body parts, which might be a bit painful. And no common person can do that without proper training. So my friend, firefighters saves lives and we should respect them. Here we, here we come up with one of the projects to ease their work and help them. Fire fighting robot from our student Samyak Shah and Rachit Bandari. So here is a small clip of fire fighting robot from a student Samyak Shah and Rachit Bandari. Hello everyone, welcome to Ignited Minds Expo 2022. I am Samya and my partner Rachit are here to present the idea of the firefighting robot. In this, this project focuses on making a fire truck that can work automatically without manpower so that the risk of people dying decreases. Our concept is to make the uh, death uh, less and uh, we can uh, the many uh, our concept is to make a way to decrease death. Many ways uh, death can happen. So
So with this robot, we can make less men go near fire. Our solution is to uh, make a robot completely automatic and uh, make it worldwide to save our firefighters from dying. We can make it completely automatic and as it, it can get fire signals from the nearby area and it can uh, go from, uh, there and do its work automatically. Now I will show you all what we have used in this project. We have used our Arduino, a Bluetooth sensor, a flame sensor, a pump motor inside this bottle, a firefighting robot cases and a bottle in this project. The main sensor is the flame sensor. Uh, this the flame sensor detects the light of the fire that then will send a signal to the microcontroller board. After the microcontroller board understands the signal, it will give it will share the signal with the pump motor to tell uh, to let the water out of the pipe. User would have faster and uh, efficient way to stop fire with this robot as it would take almost no time for the sensors to detect fire and make the water come out of the pump motor. In future, after adding uh, long distance flame sensors, we can improve this project because it would help, uh, it would help the robot to detect the fires faster. Now we will demonstrate our project. Please help us make this robot a real idea. Thank you. Very well explained, Samyak and Rachit. So you have made a project that would help firefighters so that they don't injure themselves. So, place, so this robot can go to places where the firefighters cannot and they can extinguish fire for them. Yes, Samyak and Rachit. Yes. Yes, sir. So, how did you come up with the idea? Did you see some place where fire was caught and you see firefighters fighting with the fire? Or how was it? How did you get this idea? We got this idea by seeing that uh, so many fire trucks are going to different places. So there would be less number of firefighters and also their lives would be in risk uh, when they save people or they ex uh, ex use the fire. Extinguished. Extinguished, sorry. Okay. So to prevent them from getting fire burns on their body and damaging their body. We have come up with this firefighting robot. Also, if a, fire, if a big fire is being caught, the firefighters may be very less to fight against that particular fire. So you have made this robot so that the robots can help them out in this particular thing of yes. extinguishing fire. Yes. Very good concept and very good idea. Definitely helping firefighters in extinguishing fire. So I'm opening up the chat for 30 seconds. What was spilling okay. in the water when it was not there?
Okay. Samya and Rachit, I guess Mahi Bora has a doubt or a query. So yes, Mahi Bora. Uh, but when the water is being spilled, it's not been spilling on the fire. It's spilling uh, ahead of the fire. So how can it go off? So it is because. Uh, right now the range of the fire flame sensor is longer so after you after coding it for making the range smaller we can make the water when it, the robot is near the fire then only the water will come out okay so this was the query of most of the students even in the chat box so they were asking what if the water starts spilling before the robot going near to the fire so basically, as Samyak said, Samyak said something related to the range of the sensor. The range of the sensor was too high. So that is the reason it started spilling out water. Okay, but you can reduce the range of the sensor, and once it goes near to the fire, then you can turn off the then you can turn on the water pump. You can you said yes, Samyak? Yes. Yes. Arav Yadav has a doubt. Yes, Arav. Sir, I just want to ask that, sir, as I have written in the chat box, I just want to ask that what, uh, we can see that the speed was very slow. And in real five fighters, if the speed was uh, this much slow, then the, uh, then the property will burn instantly. That's why I was saying. And so, it spilled less water. So it was that this is just a model. So... Uh, if it will become a real idea, we could find a way to increase the speed of the robot. And uh, I just want to ask that it is waterproof. Yeah, we can make. Uh, we can use materials that are waterproof on uh, to make the parts of it, so it would be waterproof. Okay, so what if uh, it is? It was going near the fire. So what if any component can get burned? So it would be covered from uh, it would be covered by a material that would allow the sensors to sense the uh, sense uh, the signals, but it would not allow the fire to reach them. Okay, thank you. Okay, very well explained, Samya and Rachet. So here's the poll for this particular project. Okay, and if you have more number of questions or queries related to this particular project, I have opened up the chat box. Okay, there is a link that is being pasted in the chat. So you can just click on that link and you'll be able to ask more number of questions for this particular project. If you have any suggestions, you can even put on those suggestions as well. And from the audience, our kids would definitely like to have some suggestions related to the project, what they have made. Okay. I guess Arab Khandul has a suggestion. No. Okay. Arab. Yes, Arab. Sir, I have a question. As yes. you told that uh, we can uh, reduce the range of the fire sensor, but if the range of fire sensor is less, so how can we? How can the robot be able to reach to the fire if fire is so far away? So if the fire sensor uh, range is reduced, so it will not be able to detect the fire. So how will it go? We don't mean that. The flame. Uh, we are not going to completely decrease the flame sensor's range. So till an amount of range, it, it would allow the robot to go. But at a certain amount of range, after that only it will allow the pump motor to uh, send water through the pipe. But as you sh uh, shown in the demonstration, the water was uh, filling, uh, spilling from the starting only. So even if you reduce a little bit of range, so 
means the water will start uh, spilling after a certain amount of time so still it would spill the water and it would be a waste of water as i was saying it is not completely so we can set a range till uh, the pipe can reach the uh, reach the place where the fire is going and till then when it reaches that certain range after uh, discovering that there is a fire it would only go till that certain range the robot will move without yes. spilling water and if at the point where it water can reach it it would start dropping water so what can you do to make to make not the water to spill before the before it has reached to fire what can you do so we can code it that and add an ir sensor that whenever the object is till in the range of like 5 cent 5 meters then only the water will fill, spill or till that time the robot will only move and i have another question so this fire can uh, reach till a uh, higher buildings or it could reach but the water was spilling a little so much lower so what can you do if it is and so high up so we can add a uh, add a thing add a object that will allow the bottle to go above till the place of fire so that it will help to transfer the fire to uh, transfer the water to the fire and we can also put a pump uh, like thing that uh, it will uh, it can uh, make the pipe uh, go like this and uh, when we uh, when the fire detects uh, it will go up and down wherever the uh, fire is uh, being and then it can give the water and my last question can it detect any vehicles so if it is going to a to the fire so if there are any vehicles in the in between so won't it crash the vehicle so is there any yeah we can use an ir sensor, IR sensor for it okay. ir sensor can detect and uh, go left or right and uh, it can detect the object that uh, if this object is then then we can call like uh, if the object comes uh, you can uh, do right or left we can uh, turn it okay thanks So you are on mute. Hello, Arav. Is it audible? Yes, sir. Yes. So did you get the expected answers? Sir, no, but uh, mostly I got not fully. 80 to 70, 80 to 90 percent answers you got. Yes. So that's also fine. And, yes. So definitely you can even give suggestions also as well. Okay. If you have any suggestions as well, because I've been watching since past two days. You and Freya are asking very good questions to our young en engineers. Okay, young ones, very good questions. So I would definitely want if you have any suggestions for them, you can even provide that as well. Okay. So yes, Arav, I would expect that thing also from you and Freya. Okay, and thank you for being such a wonderful audience and a good listener as well as a good questionnaire. Okay, thank you. And the poll has already been posted for project two and the form also has been posted in the chat box. So let's move on to the third project. A street light, light pole, lamp post, street lamp, etc. are a raised source of light on edge of the road or path. In urban areas, electric power distribution is ubiquitous, but in rural areas, it is difficult in night if there is no light on road. Here, we have a solution made by our young mind, Kanav Mehta, automatic street light. So we have Kanav Mehta here. 
who would be presenting this project automatic street light so here's a small clip of the same hello i am kadam mehta from class 7 and i am going to talk about a project that is automatic street light this project focuses on how to you how to improve the way we use automatic street lights we've come across many problems like the lights are on during the day and off during the night when it is required this happens due to the absence of the attendants when they have to turn on and off the lights so i can of mehta has made a new invention like the light dependent resistor which is used in the project so that it takes in light intensity and gives the uh, gives information to the microcontroller and it is processed then through the leds which then turns on and off the lights now i will demonstrate the project as you can see over here we have our arduino nano and our ldr sensor as it is night the light turns on and as it is day the light will turn off like this we can save electricity and energy this also reduces the workforce of men in future we can also use solar panels to improve the way the environment is now let's explain the program it shows that this is a loop block that means it will run this program forever after that it is a if then else block so in if part we have said that the light sensor a1 if it is high then the light the led will turn on or it will turn off thank you Hello Kanav Hello sir Okay So you have come up with the project of automatic street lights Yes sir So what are components did you use Can I just So I have so I have used the Arduino Nano I have used the LDR sensor or the photo resistor and some leds that are pa- that are powered leds so they are the power leds are leds that sh- uh, that throw strong light not dim lights okay so you have used power leds so that it can give out more amount of uh, yeah. light and two pin gst wires and three pin gst wires okay. and a battery and okay 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 very good very good uh Do you think this particular project has already been introduced somewhere, or you're on mute, Kanas? Yes, I. One minute, just. Yeah, until my research, I have not seen these projects anywhere till now. Okay, okay, fine, fine. So, audience, be ready with your questions. I'm opening up the chat. For thirty seconds, and random one or two questions would be answered by Master Kanav Mehta. So, Kanav, are you ready? Yes, sir. Yes, very good. Okay, kind of. There is one question from Freya Shah and Pratham Loda. I guess they both have the same question. How will it detect night and day? So basically, the LDR sensor uses uh like the light intensity. So if light is falling on it, so it will tell the LEDs to not turn on the light. and if it is darkness and it's completely night then the ldr sensor will get no light upon it so it will tell the ld leds to turn on okay 
Okay, we have Pratham Loda here. I guess he has a doubt. Yes, Pratham. But what will happen when uh, the when it's the evening time, but there is a darkness, uh, like it's a rainy season, so it's uh, the uh, weather is dark, so then also the, the lights will be on or off. So like when it is rainy and when it is foggy at that time, when rain season is there and when it turns dark quickly, so that time the lights will turn on quickly when the rainy season starts. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Pratham, for such a wonderful question. Yes, Arav. Arav Kandol. Sir, I have a doubt that as he told that it detects light in some intensity. So at night there is also moon. It also reflects the sunlight. So won't it detect that? So it won't turn on. Uh, actually, the moon's light is very less, but we that won't affect on the LDR sensor as it requires darkness and not and it does not. If it is even little light, it won't detect that much because. The where we the way we are using it, it has a flat land and everything. So where we are to place the LDR sensor for the street lights to work. So that's why moonlight won't affect it right now. But if it uh, if it affects it, so what can you improve in your project? So like we can make it sharp, like we can make the range of the LDR sensor, like the like LDR how it takes the intensity of light. We can make it sharper. The range. Okay, thanks. Welcome. Yes, we have Soumya Dalal here. Yes, Soumya. Sir, I want. Yes, sir. I want to ask that as he told that we will use an Arduino Nano, but Arduino Nano can supply maximum five volts. Then how will the street lights get turn on? Because they so, require more voltage. So we can produce microcontrollers that have larger producing of voltage that can send to the uh, LDR sensor and the LEDs. And one more thing that in what range should we attach LDR sensors? Because some places the evening is early and in, if we see in Kolkata, the evening is early, but in Mumbai, it's late. So, yet, like how the first question was in rainy season that uh, it will turn quickly, like that only in some places, LEDs will turn quickly on and some places it will be late because in Mumbai places, it is late night. It takes a lot of time to turn to evening. So, that's why it will be late than the other places in India. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Okay. Thank you, Soumya. And thank you others as well who have asked questions related to this automatic street lights. Okay, Arav Yadav. Yes, I guess he has one particular question. He has raised his hand. Yes. Uh, what if there is solar eclipse or lunar eclipse? So for that, we have to do uh, further research on that and then we can come back with a new project for it. So if you come with a new project, the problem will be that how you will detect that it is solar eclipse or lunar eclipse. So we can use satellites for that, like when the it's going to happen and it's not going to happen like when solar and lunar eclipse is going to take place because we have predictions every time that when it's going to take place okay. so we can use the help of satellites to predict okay. yes i guess Soumya Dala. Soumya Dala, do we have a question or is it a suggestion yes Sir, as Aro asked, but I feel that this project, if there is a solar eclipse, then the light won't fall on the certain area and the street light will automatically turn on. Yes, yes, yes. So basically solar eclipse or lunar eclipse, what it will do, it will either give out light or it will block light. Yes. So yes. it will be either light 
would be present or it, there would be a darkness in that particular area so the main purpose of this project was to be more clear and precise like if there is darkness the street light should automatically turn on yes kanav if i am right yes sir if there is darkness detected like if it's evening time and based on the darkness or intensity you can change the brightness of these street lights yes 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 sir thank you soumya for giving up such a wonderful suggestion thank yes, you yes i guess priya also has a question yes priya sir i have a question for the project number 2 can i ask project number 2 uh i have posted up a link you can post it there freya sir i yesterday also posted on the first day also but uh, still like there was no contact then you have posted it in the link yes sir i have, uh, I have posted many times yesterday okay, also uh, but no okay, so there are more number of questions that is being continuously posted so we are replying one by one to everyone we'll get the data don't worry okay freya okay yeah Or else you can you have a contact details also I provided yesterday. Yes. yes, you can post your query in that particular detail as well. Yes. Okay, so here is the poll for project number three. So how did you like this project? Was it interesting? How do you rate this project? Was Kanav able to answer all your questions? last 15 seconds Okay so the poll will end now Thank you Kanav Thank you sir for explaining this wonderful project and answering the queries of our audiences thank you thank you sir Yes so let's move on with the next project major health risk in a hospital come not only from illness or injury but also from the danger of patients slipping or falling while trying to perform daily activities yes so a hospital attendant keep this risk in check hospital attendants in this covid are working really hard and helping us to fight from covid to make their work easier and help patients to call them anytime in need we have come up with a wonderful project insta care alert so insta care alert by master rayans botadra and mahi bora so insta care alert can you pin rayans botadra and mahi bora okay rayan chand mahi can you give me a brief introduction about yourself your name your grade and your school yes sir uh, my name is mahi bora uh, my school name is pinakal high international school i am in fourth grade okay yes rayan so uh, my name is rayan botadra I study in Bilabong High International School and I am in fourth grade. Okay, very good, Rayan and Mahi. Both are in fourth grade. One is in Pinnacle High and the other one is in Bilabong International School. 
So, how did you get this idea, or why is it called as Insta Care Alert? What does this Insta Care Alert? How did you get this idea? Yeah, so we got this idea. So, in today's Corona situation, many patients have to wait for a long time to get checkup, and they can't even call out because of the oxygen mask. So, we thought of building this project. So, we have use touch sensors then rdt no nano led buzzer yeah so if the patient have to if the patient presses the touch sensor the led will be on as well as the buzzer will buzz. yeah, so okay. if the patient press the touch sensor look at this Okay, so let's see a small clip of the project by Rayanj Botagra and Mahi Bora. Yes. Hello, my name is Mahi Bora and this is my partner. Hi, I'm Rayanj Botagra. We are here to present our project, Insta Care Alert. Insta Care Alert means instant alerting nurse where patients are in need. Our project focuses on hospital and patients. In today's corona situation, many patients have to wait for a long time for the nurse to come and check up them and they can't even call out because of the oxygen mask. So we have made this project InstaCare Alert. We have used two touch sensors, Arduino Nano, LEDs and buzzer. If the patient wants to call the nurse, he or she just has to touch the touch sensor and the LED will be on of that bed. Let me show you. Also the buzzer will buzz if the nurse is not nearby so she can get an alert for the patient to get check up. The microcontroller will send the, the touch sensor will be pressed and it will send the information to the microcontroller. The microcontroller will understand the, uh, the signal and send the command to the output device, the LED and the touch set, sorry, the buzzer. This project can be built in real life or in the future. Future applications where we can use the pulse rate and the oxygen level to alert the nurse. Once the pulse rate is high or the oxygen level is high, the nurse will get the alert so the patient can get up get checked quickly. Hope you liked our project. Thank you. Very good Rayansh and Mahi. So for this particular project as Rayansh and Mahi said they have named it as Insta Care Alert so that the patients can or the nurses can instantly check the patients. Yes. So for yes. that particular thing they have named it as Insta Care Alert. So yeah. for fourth grader kid, this is a very good project, Rayansh and Mai. So I would want my audience to give up some suggestions, some better suggestions for our kids. Because these young minds need some suggestions so that they can work and build such wonderful projects. Very good, Rayansh and Mai. Very, very good. So I'll just open up the chat for 30 seconds. I would want my audience to give suggestions, very good suggestions to our young minds. Uh, with the oxygen level, with the oxygen level, they can, with the oxygen level, uh, uh, there is one sensor which also can be built with the uh, image connected to oxygen. Okay, so for this particular project, I would take suggestions from my audience. So I guess one suggestion is being posted here by Freya Shah. Yes, Freya. Yes, 
sir yes. uh, i know i have made many typing errors uh, actually i wanted to suggest them that um, many times it happens that when their oxygen level is not so good and they are that much ill that uh, just tapping uh, is so hard for them so in that case it should be like that if they just uh, they have a bed they are sleeping on a bed so they can just uh, uh, tap on the uh, that mattress mattress below the mattress the wood is there or the whatever metal they can just tap on that again and again because in pain yes we do tap sometimes when they are like so much uh, burning from inside so okay. that voice detector i mean sound detector should be there so that the doctors can be informed at that time that yes they are not able to tap it so when they are just uh, uh, seriously just uh, simply tapping it uh, yes or no but still they will just check up there they would be partially informed but yes they would be informed so that should be there okay very good thank you freya for such a wonderful suggestion for this particular project of insta care alert by riyan and my i guess mahi and riyan did you get the point what freya has said yes yes sir yes so you have come up with the project of if there is a patient and if he wants to be checked by the doctor so he or she will press a button and call the doctor but what if the patient is severe yes what if the patient is severe or is very much ill so she has given up a solution that the patient can tap on the side of the bed and there should be a sound sensor connected so if there is a tapping sound rigorous tapping sound the doctor or the nurse would be alerted am i right freya yes yes thank you freya for such a wonderful suggestion yes kashvi did you raise your hand okay freya you want to ask something yes sir yes uh, actually in the chat box there is one question and even i wanted to ask that uh, that if a person is handicapped so like uh, sound sensor is when they tap like they wouldn't be able to speak if there is oxygen mask so like what will you set for those who are handicapped okay yes okay i have the answer but i'm just tweaking then okay fine fine definitely yes riyans what riyans and mahi what if a person is handicapped and if he or she cannot press a switch so is there any particular the solution for this the sensor can be attached with the machine i didn't get your point the machine can be attached to the sensor okay which machine can it be a bit more specific for riyan oxygen oxygen my sir the my, sir my is trying to say for the handicap so there will be a band type of thing over here so the touch sensor will be placed on it okay the touch sensor would be placed on it okay yes priya do you have a better solution for them yes there are two solution one is simple and one is like they need to work on that uh, one is that if their pulse rate goes a uh, uh, very much down or up like a disturbance happens And then just that pulse rate machine should be that much advanced. You should advance that machine that it it automatically sends the uh, message to that doctor or the nurse so that they can be called. Or if that advancement cannot be made, uh, then if they are handicapped, they are not. They have the legs, right? Right. So they are like they are wearing something. Yeah. So. even the wall should have them so they can touch the wall even so like they should be that much informed that just touch the wall in case if you are uh, ill in uh, till the time that machine is advanced so that wall can also inform it thank you freya riyan and mahi i think the suggestion given by freya would definitely help you out and you can work on this particular point as well and before going on to the next project or coming up with the poll i want everyone to just clap for these two kids mahi and riyans you can just put up the clap 
emoji or icon because the fourth grader kids have thought about this wonderful problem and they came up with the solution very good rayan and my very very good rayan are you nervous no my are you nervous no. no so you can say thank you to freya for giving such a wonderful suggestion thank you freya you are most welcome yes thank you so here is the poll for this particular project and i am putting up a link on the chat box thank you freya for giving such wonderful information to our kids here is the form link you can put up your suggestions as well So here, uh, so here is the poll for this particular project. Yes, Arav, Arav Yadav. Yes, sir. I just want to ask that I have in the chat box also. I just want to ask that what will happen if, by mistake, someone stepped on the wires of the you know system, and the wire didn't work out this time, and the uh. And the patient is in the heart situation. He's trying to locate that. Uh, he's trying to touch again and again, but the doctor is not coming because the uh, the wire. Someone has stepped on the wire. So what will happen? What they can improve in that situation? Yes, my. Bluetooth sensor can be attached. Okay, so she is saying instead of having wires around the side, if someone steps on the wires, so if the wires get damaged or something happens, and how will the patient send signal to the nurse or the doctor? Yes, Arif. So she yes, said sir. Bluetooth sensor. So Bluetooth sensor is basically used for wireless communication. Okay. Sir. Okay. Yeah. So the poll will end in another ten seconds, and then we'll move on to the next project. Yes, the poll has ended. So we'll move on to the next project. Oh, I must say, this generation is really thinking on solutions to reduce this COVID infection here. I have one more innovation. to avoid contact with things the most common thing we use daily in our life is lift where number of n number of people touch the buttons and it might even cause the infection to spread so to avoid it we have touchless lift presented by our kids and not kid specifically it is kid gorav bhagat touchless lift using rfid by gorav bhagat our touchless elevator demo shows how rfid can be used to develop touchless hygienic elevator controls current uh, advice from the us center of advice control specifically highlights uh, uh, specifically highlights elevator buttons as a main risk of covid-19 transmission advising people to uh, use a personal card or gesture to travel one floor to another the key uh, the, the key to success integration of the uh, functional unit is the end user experience the ability to call the lift with just a tap on the sensor with the card it also allows the user to be safe as every floor is specifically assigned with a, a specific card hello my name is gorav bhagat and this is my project my project topic is specially touchless lift 
If I scan the white RFID co uh, card, then it will stop at 3. And if I scan the blue RFID co card, it will stop at 4. Basically, this uh, animation is showing the numbers that uh, our lift is going up. Thank you. I hope you like my project. Thank you. Okay, so we have Gaurav Bhagat here. Hello, Gaurav. Hello, sir. Okay. So, how did you come up with this particular project? How did you get the idea? Uh, sir, uh, basically, when I uh, when I saw in the news, like many people are infected by uh, COVID nineteen, so I thought, like, how, what are the ways that we can reduce COVID nineteen? So I thought okay. this idea. Okay. So you saw it in news that. Due to COVID nineteen not being near to each other, there are chances of this COVID infection to spread. Yes. Yes. So you came up with something like called as touchless lift, where you don't need to touch every time. You just need to scan your card. Yes, sir. Okay. So I'm opening up the chat for everyone. You can put up your suggestions. More importantly. Okay, so there is one question from Rachit Gupta. Okay, Gaurav, be ready, okay? The question states, we can use a pen or a holder to tap the button. So if we can use a pen or holder to tap the button, then why to use that entire card? Why to invest so much? The question states that. Uh... Yes, Gaurav. Gaurav, if we can use a pen or a holder to tap the button, so why do we need to use a card or something like that? You understood what uh, he's trying to say? Yes, sir, I understood. Uh, okay, that's fine, Gaurav. That's absolutely fine. You can just think about it, okay? Or, sir, uh, it would uh, increase the privacy to like one card is specifically assigned at the floor. So it would also create privacy. Okay. So it can even create privacy. Okay. Do you have a solution for this particular question? Like you can use a pen or a holder to tap the button. I have one solution for this. What? Anyone would like to try? Mm -hmm. What solution can be given? Rachit, do you have a solution? Rachit Gupta. You have asked the question.
Rachit Gupta, you're here? Yes, sir. Yes, so you have asked this question. We can also use a pen or a holder to tap the button. So do you have a solution for this? Yes, sir. I have one particular thing, yes. Not everyone has something uh, in hand to tap. So it will be more useful for our RFID. To tap. Yes. So not every person has a thing to tap. Yes. So if they also want to move up or down, they, they can have this thing and it will be more secure. I have one more solution. See, if you are using a pen or a holder or anything, so if you press the pen or a holder, if you take that holder or pen and if you press that particular button, the germs of the button would be then shifted to the pen. Yes. So that pen, you will be keeping it in your pocket or in your box or anywhere. Okay, so that would create spreading of infections more quickly. Yes. Okay, Arav. Yes, Arav. Thank you, Rachit. Thank you for your question as well as a wonderful solution. Yes, Arav. Arav Kandor. There are two Arav, so there is a bit of errors being caused here. Yes, Arav. Sir, I wanted to tell that in, I saw in YouTube shots that uh, China has made a lift in, in where there is a section where there are so many, what we tell, that sticks, uh, sticks. So we can just take it and uh, click the button and then throw in the dustbin. So there are there is a wrap for the uh, sticks and there is a dustbin too. And I don't know somewhere, but there is somewhere. Uh, the buttons of the lifts are are in the, the what we tell are low down so we can just uh, press it with our foot okay so that was one particular point yes Arav, you have said it right that you can use a stick up a temporary stick which can be pressed and then you can place it again back in yes the, sir so the if there is already a stick or there are already buttons down below so why would someone use this uh, instead of that easy task yes so Arav, as he said to maintain privacy this will increase more of security you might have seen in most of the restaurants or hotels where people stay there are those cards so you cannot travel on any of the floor without those cards. You cannot move up or down without those cards. So as Gaurav said, that privacy is the key. Yes. Sir, sir, no one can restrict, restrict anyone to go wherever. Anyone can go wherever, at what floor they want. So they can just click it with the stick so and then throw it in the dustbin so it would be much easier than this card technique we have to scan then it will move yes gaurav do you have any take on this no sir okay so definitely work on this particular point yes, okay what aarav said yes sir huh? yes sir okay yes, sir. and yes, aarav very good yes, solution you gave huh? okay Thank you and Gaurav definitely work on the point like if it is more private and I secure then instead of buildings you can put it somewhere else where you need more huh? of secure privacy and security. Yes, in yes, sir. a regular building or in a normal residential building instead of that you can go with any commercial building yes where you need more privacy. Yes, yes. yes. yes so sir. the poll is open. Okay, so we have one more question from Hitain Mandalia. He has raised his hand. Yes. For others, the poll is open. Hi, Gaurav. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Yeah, hi, Gaurav. Gaurav, yeah, it is so audible, I guess. Yes. Hitain sir's audio is audible. Hitain sir, Hitain Mandalia is here. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes sir. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Gaurav. So first of all, I very well liked your project. 
the new technique which we have used it's called wireless technology if i am not wrong correct yes so i have not seen this technology used anywhere in india right now in lip so yes. i think you are the first one to introduce this technology in my case like i have not seen i don't know if everyone has seen okay okay uh, the i have one solution or, or a suggestion you can say for the previous point which you said so we cannot use this like uh, r of khandol said we cannot uh, restrict anyone to wander and in, in the building anywhere they want obviously we yes. cannot do that but what we can do is we can use this technology in five star seven star hotels like if i have assigned i have been assigned a room number room on 13th floor and i am not allowed to wander anywhere at night in the hotel okay so the management can assign this card to me and i can directly go to my room so i think it's all restricted this, areas too restricted area. yes so so this project cannot be only used in the covid times but it can be also used where high security or privacy is needed okay so yes. this is a very well implemented project just we need to i mean you need to upgrade it more so it can come to life okay okay right. thank you varun thank you itain sir for such a wonderful suggestion and thank you gorav for coming up with some good project and using the technology at its must yes so i guess the poll has been posted already and it has ended okay the poll has just started for project 5 थैंक यू गौरव फॉर प्रेजेंटिंग सच अ वंडरफुल प्रोजेक्ट and the poll will end in another 10 seconds everyone i hope everyone has voted yes gaurav yes sir thank you i said thank you for explaining this project yes sir thank you sir very good so i hope you will even work on the improvements or suggestions provided by our guides and audiences yes sir yes okay thank you and we are done with five of the projects of day 3 we will take a short break of 2 minutes before that before taking a short break i have a question for you for the audience i have a question for you be attentive be quick rather and use your brains okay so this is the third prize that will be presenting to our audience day 3 the question states the question in the chat box the first one to answer correctly the first one to answer correctly gets the reward okay the question states in the chat box We are. Okay, we have already received one answer. We have not only received one answer. We have received n number of answers, and the fastest one to answer is Arif Khandol. Can you please pin Arif? Hello Arav you are back again Yes sir with a very quick response for this particular question what is the full form of radar yes what is the full form of radar let everyone know 
radio detection and ranging radio detection and ranging okay before going in this particular point can you just tell the audience your full name your grade your school and where you are from my name is arav khandol i am studying in 6th grade 6th grade surya varsani academy and i am from bhuj very good 6th grade and you are from bhuj surya vanshi academy surya varsani academy surya varsani academy Yes. Okay, very good, very good. And how did you come up with this full form? Like, where did you know, or how do you know about this particular thing? Sir, I, yeah. sir, I knew before. Means, uh, I know what is radar. Sometimes I, I, I was uh, doing about. Means, I was, I tried to research. I just search what is radar, and then right now I just see in Google. Sir, before also, sir, before I knew, but right now, I think. Okay, a very honest answer, or a very good, a very honest answer that you have reviewed it on Google. That's absolutely fine. Sir, I before I knew, but a, right now I forgot. That's absolutely fine. There were no restrictions that you cannot Google it and you can give the answer. I just wanted the answer, so you have Googled it. that's absolutely fine the fastest one to answer gets the reward definitely yes so arav kandol said sixth grade from surya vasani school academy sorry school surya vasani academy bhuj okay the next form i'll suggest i'll post it to you now arav you can just mention your entire details so that we can give you or send you your gift Okay, sir. Yes, very good, very good, Ara. So let's take a two-minute quick break. We'll be back within two minutes. Till that, stay tuned, everyone. We have more four projects to go.
Kids are naturally curious about things around them. They just need a platform to ignite the spark of innovation, solve real world challenges, and showcase it to the world. Introducing IME. United Minds Expo is an annual interactive technology carnival that showcases the innovation potential of youths in the field of science, robotics, artificial intelligence, and related technologies. Students come up with a variety of creative ways to incorporate robotics and technology into our everyday life. They work in teams, research, and develop their projects and celebrate their accomplishments. Here, you witness innovation in various domains. Agriculture, healthcare, automation, defense, education, entertainment, environment, lifestyle, smart solutions. We invite you to come be a part of this high energy event and experience the wonders of technology in an environment of fun. Okay, so we are back again and so we are done with five projects. We'll be moving on to the next project that is car security system. Nowadays in Mumbai, we are dealing with problems of vehicle security. Abandoned vehicles can not only be eyesore, but take up valuable parking spaces in crowded residential tower or buildings. I have heard in my building itself last week, one unregistered car illegally tried to enter our parking. Thanks to Ayush Gothi, he came up with a solution. Let's hear it from him, his interesting solution. So here we have Ayush Gothi. With this very innovative project, car security system. Hello, I am Ayush Gopti from Science Kids Year 2, and I am here to present my idea of automatic car security system. My project focuses on automatic entry of car into the society premises. Due, uh, due to increase in number of cars, there is a cause for major security concern in the housing society. Due to non-availability of automatic cars, systematic control system, the society has a risk of outside cars entering into the society premises. The existing solution is that the society gate is ma manned by a security guard and the cars are provided with stickers. Whenever a car wants to enter the society, the, the security guard identifies the sticker and allows the car into the society. The problem arises when the security guard is not available and, a car, and any car wants to enter the society. So the driver himself opens the gate and enters the society. In order to mitigate all such risks, I have come up with a solution. I have used RFID technology. Instead of providing stickers to the car owners, the society will provide RFID tag to the car owners which will be affixed on the car bumpers. At the gate there will be a RFID card reader which will scan the RFID tag whenever a car stops near the gate and wants to enter the society. The RFID tag is registered with a code which is registered in the RFID card reader and the gate barrier will only open when the code is matched and so the car can now enter the society. In this project, I have used RFID card reader, servo motor, Arduino Nano and RFID tag, a robotic car which has Arduino Nano, Bluetooth sensor and DC motor. 
When the car will stop at the bridge, the RFID car reader will scan the RFID tag and if the code matches, it will send signal input to the microcontroller and microcontroller will send signal to the output device that is the servo motor and it will rotate to 90 degrees and then it will close after few seconds. The main sensor is the RFID card reader. The advantages in this project are it removes manual intervention that is the security guard, hassle free driving for drivers and maintenance of record for entry and exit of drivers. Now I will demonstrate my project. For this project I have built a housing complex. This is a road, this is the barricade which will give direction to the driver. This is the gate of the society which has RFID technology. This is the gate barrier, the garage, garden, the building and the swimming pool. As we all know security is not a product, it is a process. So now let's begin with the process. Now I will drive the car to the society using a remote control. Now when the RFID card will scan the tag and if the code matches then the toll gate barrier will open. Now the car has entered the garage and the gate barrier has been closed. At the end of the day my goals are simple. Safety and security. Very good, Ayush. Ayush, can you just introduce yourself? Your name, your standard, your school, and where you are from. Yes, sir. Hello, I am Ayush Goti, and I am in eighth grade from MKVV IV School. I live in Mumbai. MKVV High School, you are in eighth grade, and you stay in Mumbai. Very good, Ayush. And the project concept, what you came up with, was really interesting. Okay, related to secure or private parking lots. Yes, sir. Yes. So, can you just let the audience know what this RFID card is actually? Yes, RFID is radio frequency identification and the RFID card reader has a, uh, the RFID tag has a code in it and the RFID card reader has, a, has that code uh, registered in it and it will scan it from a distance and if the codes are same, then the servo motor in my project opens. Okay. Uh, the RFID is a wireless technology. RFID is a wireless technology. Okay. Are you, are you ready for the questions being asked by the audiences? Yes, sir. The audience are already ready and I can see their hands coming out of the camera already. Yes, sir. Yes, so be ready. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we have Devia here. Yes, Devia. Well, if uh, this concept is nice, but if someone takes the car and uh, puts on uh, his or her car, then what will happen? Then, uh, like if the card is stolen, you are saying? Yes. Uh, but the RFID card will be affixed permanently on the car's bumper. It cannot be removed. Okay. Okay, it's not for the user. It is for the car behavior, as he suggests. The car is connected like a fast tag. You have it in your toll system. You connect it to the car. Similarly, this tag is inside your car. It is not with the person. It has yeah. nothing to do with the car or the person. It has to do with the parking lot. Like the registered vehicles only can enter the parking lot. Am I right, Ayush? Yes, sir. Yes. So next question goes to Arav. Yes, Arav. Arav K. Ayush, be ready, okay? Yes, sir, sir, I don't have any question. I just have a suggestion that uh, there okay. are fast tags during toll tags. So why to put it uh, beside the car? It would not look good for the car owner also. So you can just insert it like a, a fast tag on your windows and it will scan it. The barrier will only scan it. Yes, in the future we can develop it. Okay. Yes, we can put it in front of the car so that instead of putting it in the edges and like on the side surfaces of your car, you can put it on the 
windshield of the car as the fast tag only thank you arav yes next arav will go to the next arav arav yadav yeah to arav so we need to be very specific i just want to uh, i would i have i have to give a i have to ask a question and give a suggestion of, on the question so okay. i just wanted to ask that if some some unregistered car came so sir if the car is not the sensor is not registering it and it is not opening the gate so what if the car owner came and uh, you can say um you can say break it then what we will he do what it can be done i have the answer also yes i should can unmute yes are you should can unmute Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. The society will also have duplicate cars. So if the car is broken, then the owner will have to inform the society and will have to get a new car, and that will uh, that code will be registered in the RFID card reader again. No, I am not uh, saying that. I am asking that if the owner of the car who is driving the car, the unregistered owner. Br break the sensors and like think dig that and open the gate. No, the gate can be opened by the uh, by a person. It is automatic. No, if he broke it and can it oh, it uh, he knows that so he how will, he can open. Or uh, that so, it will be recorded in the CCTV camera. If if the person broken or uh, broke it, then there will be the persons and the police will be called. It cannot be broken like that. Okay, sir. I I just have the suggestion that if uh, for these, uh, there can be alarm in the society. Like if some unregistered car came and uh, it is showing that the gate is the gate is closed. So there can be a buzzer that will uh, you can say Come buzz on. when it happens. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Arav, for such sir. a wonderful question. Yes. Sir, I just wanted to say that in the video you showed, he has just showed that a registered car car came and the gate opened. What will happen if an unregistered car came? Can you show now? If the okay. unregistered car will come, then it will not scan the RFID tag and the motor will not open. It uh, this project is only for the uh, 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 society car owners, not for the other guests. Okay, I understand this, but I just want to uh, ask that uh, can you show now that what if an unregistered car came? Yes, I will develop it in my next project. If an uh, if an unregistered car comes in front of the gate, the gate yes. won't open. Just yes. like that. Yes. There's nothing different. The gate will not open. Okay. Okay. As you as you saw in the video, the gate opened when a registered car came. So if an unregistered car comes, the gate won't open. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Arav. Why for a wonderful question and a suggestion? Yes, Priya Shah. No, no. He told that uh, if an unregistered car came, then it won't open the door. Then what if a guest came? Right. Usually, guests come do come at our homes to meet us. So then that uh, uh, that breaker would not open for the guests. Then it would prohibit guests to come also. No, but uh, every society has a different arrangement for guests. There is no parking for the guest in the society. Otherwise, all the unauthorized car will enter. Like this is Mumbai, but even in other cities like Bhuj, that's also a city, right? So, yes. like if in a society here, there are normal societies. If we put a RFID type of here in a Bhuj societies and the societies in the Bhuj. Then uh, the cars just come. They don't have RFID uh, code, RFID yeah. tag, and they are unregistered. So the car will park in the parking lot only. It will not. No, go but uh, uh, there will be a different gate for the visitors, and it will not be connected to the society. So the visitors will have to go there and inform the society. Then only they will enter. 
for that the society needs to pay more fund right more waste there will be a there are two gates but okay, why is there is only one gate as a main gate this yes. is you are talking about advanced modern cities but this is not just for advanced modern cities you have to also give it to other cities they are also a city right so yes. And what for those usually in Burj, the car comes and rests in the, uh, what do we say, garage or near the home of the, uh, of the person they have came, came to meet. So that time they won't allow the guests to come. What solution do you have for that? I'm simply asking. Uh, then the guest will have to inform the society and the society will have to make some arrangement. They have to inform the society, yes. the society head. No, the society, uh, the society. people who have guests at their home, they will have to inform the society. But when they uneventually come, no, but they have to inform the society. Okay. I guess I guess RF came and has a solution for this. Yes, RF. Okay, yes, you can unmute RF. And if Rhea, every uh, if someone is uh, if a guest is coming, of course, wherever uh, at whose home they are going, they of course have contact. So just they will contact the house they want to go, and they will just contact to the means the sec secretary of the. Yes, I was seeing like, that. Then why didn't you say that? I, I guess I was trying to say the same thing. Like yeah, if I to say that coming, you suppose a guest is coming, he just inform the society person like where. Whoever's place is going to, and the society will then arrange some management thing for them also, a parking lot for them also. Yes, Ayush and Arav? Yes. Yes. So, Freya, I guess you got your answer. Okay. Thank you, Freya. Thank you, Arav, for putting up your questions and giving up your suggestions and solutions as well. And thank you, Ayush for giving such wonderful answer thank as you. well as this wonderful project. So thank here's the poll for Ar Ayush Goti. So here's the poll for Ayush Goti. So was this project interesting? Like what did you like in this particular project? Was it a concept, the project model, presentation or all of the above? And how would you rate this project? Legendary, excellent, good, <laughs> yes, Arav, I read your 
exactly not a question yes the poll will uh, for others the poll will end in 10 seconds okay yes so that are of yes sir i just wanted to say that i have to go somewhere so i am just leaving the class because uh, there is some urgent work so i have to go somewhere okay arav but you will miss the poll at the end sir which poll the best project of the day okay. i guess your vote might be of importance for one of the project okay sir okay sir bye Bye. You are leaving, Arav. Yes, sir. Because we have two urgent. more projects to go. Sir, because it's very urgent. Okay. Okay, that's absolutely fine, Arav. Okay. We'll meet you in the next event session. Okay. Next Friday we are also coming again. Okay. okay. Next Friday, Saturday. So be. Sir, I will take my project till then. Bye, sir. Okay, you make it by then. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I guess he was in a hurry. Yeah. Thank you, Ayush, for presenting such a wonderful project. We'll move ahead with our next project. Today's consumers trust their mobile phones with more personal information and data than ever. Consequently, when a device goes missing, it's more than just an inconvenience. It's a risk to their privacy and identity. Now, my researcher master, Pratham Loda. created mobile theft detection detection system to guard their mobile device so yes pratham loda from science kids has come up with a project mobile theft detection yes pratham can you just give me a brief introduction about yourself your name your school your standard and where are you from Uh, my name is Pratham Roda. I am I am from Jodhpur. My school name is Bodhi International, and I am in Grade Six. Okay, Pratham Roda is in Grade Six. You are from Bodhi International High School. Yes. Okay, and you are from Jodhpur. Yes. You are one student from Rajasthan. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. So let's see what Pratham has made. So what his project actually is. So here's a small clip. Hi, I'm Pratham Loda. Today I'm going to tell you about my project, mobile theft detector, as you can see here. So this is uh, I've used the components. This is the component, the first component, the buzzer PCB, traffic light PCB. Arduino Nano touch sensor and a mobile for explaining the project. Here is the coding. As you can see, the in this part where my mouse moving in this part here I have I have uh, you see like the uh, green and yellow light. Whenever they will glow, the buzzer will not buzz, and when the red light glows, the buzzer will start buzzing. Let's see, will this work or not? So. Till the my mobile is here, the green and yellow light are glowing, and buzzer is not buzzing as you can see and hear. And now, whenever when I remove my mobile, and then the red light and the buzzer will start buzzing. See, the green and yellow light turns off, and buzzer starts buzzing, and the red light is on, as you can hear and see. Thank you. Okay, very well explained, Arav. Sorry, not Arav. Pratham. So the Arav, there are multiple Arav, so I got a bit confused. It's Pratham. Thank you, thank you, sir. Yes, Pratham, you have made such a wonderful project on this mobile theft detection. So how did you get this idea of mobile theft detection? Sir, there were two reasons. Uh, the first reason was like that uh, I saw I uh, saw the news like many children are getting addicted by the uh, phone. So uh, some children, those who are uh, not having personal phone, they uses the uh, parents' phone. So for the uh, 
parents sometimes are busy in the uh, work so they leave, leave their phones uh, aside and then go for work so the children uh, they take the mobile uh, mobile and the parents don't get to know for uh, that reason i have made this like uh, whenever the mobile will get uh, detached from that place or mo get moved from that place the buzzer will start buzzing and the parents will get to know uh, that uh, the mobile is uh, has taken by the child or someone okay so you have made it not for theft basically you have made it for protecting the mobile phones from children yes sir yes yes sir so, so the parents are more like they need to be more secure they need to have more security from children than thieves getting their mobile phone no sir not uh, not that uh, from uh, yeah i get this i get your from, point uh, i get your point it was just i was just saying that definitely it will work in both the cases and your project is absolutely good so i just check whether the audiences have anything in their box for you yes daivya daivya you can unmute and speak yes uh, abhi uh, like Uh, like uh, like uh, 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 behind you, I guess there is some sound coming up. So can just yes. Like that. Same thing. Same thing. Sorry for this. Like Pratham told that it has to be kept on the laptop. So suppose uh, we are in a mall and we take our phone and some uh, somebody steals our phone. <laughs> What will we do? Uh, can you repeat the question? Adam, he said that the safety thing, okay, the mobile safety thing is being kept at your home. Yes. Then the device, whatever you have made, that you have kept it at your home. What if a person takes, like, if you take your mobile, you don't take the safety thing with you in malls or some other places. So, what solution do you have for that? Sir, this is for like I've made this for uh, like for at home at uh, for at home. Okay, you have made it for indoor purpose. And I will make for the office purpose purpose uh, in my next project. Okay, you'll make it for other uses also in the next project. Yes. Yes, there you are. One second. Yes, Freya. Firstly, I want to ask him that uh, in that sensor, does it detect the radiation from the phone, or it just detect that there is a thing on the sensor? Uh, the the touch sensor just uh, uh, tells the buzzer that the phone is get uh, not uh, at the place where it should be. Leave the thing. Leave the phone here. Just can. I'm just asking it. Does it uh, keep? Let sensor is detecting that whether the phone is on the place or not by the radiation coming from the phone or just as something is there on the sensor. Just uh, as the some uh, something yeah. is there. Yeah. Then then there will be a problem. You know, um, phone have cover for protection. So. And the child will remove the cover, so cover would be there. So sensor will think there is the phone, and the phone would be taken out. But uh, to taking out the cover, uh, she, uh, he or she needs to take the phone in the hand. Mm hmm. That's not the case for all the phones. Do you think so that all the phone covers are so tight? But the phone covers are tight. Uh, are tight. <laughs> there are, are coming also? some phones, especially of uh, one one or two phone as of Nokia. It has very loose covers and can be easily taken out. They are not precisely used for covers also. Or if you take one thing like you just swap the phone with some object, like a thin card or anything, it just detects something. So anything that child have kept by swapping it from the phone without giving a second. So what about that? 
यस प्रथम यस प्रथम यू कैन डेफिनेटली वर्क ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट ओके सोल्यूशन If a parent is using this particular device for protecting their phone, then I guess the parent can even afford a better cover for their phone, <laughs> a tight cover rather, not a better, a tight cover rather. And big, but this is just for a simple purpose. Just for a child should not. Uh, it is not for the child basically. It is generally, as I said, as I said, no, it is for basically theft detection. Okay, so he just added the point that even children sometimes, when their parents are not present, they take the phone, they start playing instead of studying. So to prevent that particular thing, he has come up with this idea. And there are Because some parents kids. can. Yes, there are some kids who uh, like they want to ask something to their uh, teacher or search something in Google. Suddenly, something cracks in their mind. So some children may take it for that purpose also. It's not always necessary. But children, uh, but children will, but uh, ch children will uh, take the permission of their. Uh, yes, they can take permission of their parents as well. Yes, they can take, but. What if the parents are sleeping and the child is so kind? He want he or she don't want their parents to. So if he or she is so kind, then the pair then the kid won't pick up the phone until the parent says to use it. Whatever it was yes. just a joke being. Okay, cracked. thank you, Freya. I just thank want to tell him much. that uh, this project, like it is good, but it's uh, not reliable to use everywhere, and it is not that much uh, uh, security. That that's not giving so much privacy, so you should improve it a lot because it's still not uh, seeming like satisfactory and reliable. Yes, Pratham. 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 Yes,
ओके यू कैन नॉट गो अराउंड एंड सर्च फ्रॉम ऑल दी थ्री सिक्सटी डिग्री एंगल्स की मेरा प्रोडक्ट क्यों नहीं चल रहा है एवरी प्रोडक्ट हैज डिफरेंट क्राइटेरिया और वी कैन से अलग अलग चीजों से बनता है सो टू यूज दैट इन आवर हाउस वी हैव टू यूज द सेम प्रोडक्ट विच वी वॉन्ट जो रिलायबल हो ओके सो इट्स वेरी गुड प्रोजेक्ट All right, and all the best. Thank you so much, sir. Welcome. Point given up by Hiten sir, Hiten Mandalia. Yes. Yes, Arav. Sir, I just want to ask if this is for uh, theft protection. So why won't a person just take up the whole laptop and the whole system and go away? Laptop also is and phone also is double problem. Yes. Pratham, do you have a solution for this? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh... But sir, this is the another case that uh, is not that. Uh, <laughs> okay, very good question, Arif. But actually, since he has kept it in front of his laptop, so you are thinking that his laptop is the main device which is protecting his mobile. But actually, what he wants to convey is he can come up with a stand or something which is already attached to your desk or your tables. Yes, yes sir, I also wanted to answer like that only. <laughs> very good, very good, Ara. Very good, very good. Understood, Pratham. Yes, sir. Yes. I will work on. Work. Yes, so you need to make a prototype which you can attach it on your tables, okay? And then the thief or the robber cannot pick up the entire table. Sir, actually, I have done that, but the stand was get uh, broken this way. Okay, okay. Fine, fine. Very good, very good, Pratham. Very good, Arav. Very Thank good you, problem you have given that the thief can pick up the entire laptop, so he'll have one plus one. Yes, no? Take pick free. Okay, very good, Arav. Thank you, Arav. And here we have poll for this particular project. Anti theft detection by Pratham Loda, sixth grade, Bodhi International School, Jodhpur. Very good, Pratham. Very good. You can vote this project. Like, what did you like? The concept, the idea, the project model, the presentation, or all of the above. Thank you, Pratham. Thank, uh, thank you, sir. Yes, thank you for having such a wonderful project and explaining it to the audience. So it was really good. The timer is for another ten seconds of the poll. So those who haven't voted yet can put up their votes.
Yes. Women play very important role in human progress and have a significant place in the society. They are capable of sharing all the responsibilities of life. However, they con however they contribute to the growth and develop and development of our country. Still, they are living in fear. Safety of women in India has become a major issue. Women think twice before stepping out of their homes, especially at night. Some of the crime against women are horrifying. The best protection any woman can have is courage. With this courage, here I have a powerful girls, Dia, Kashvi, and Trisha, who will ensure women's safety with the medium of electronics and animation. Hello, Kashvi. Hi, sir. Hello, Dia. Hi, sir. Hello, Trisha. Hi, sir. So, my Powerpuff Girls are here and they'll be demonstrating a project on women's safety. Yes? So here's a small clip of what their project is. So there's a small demonstration and a small animation what they have made. Yes. So I'll just share a small video of their project. And then we'll have the questions and answers. Hello, I'm Dia. I'm Sandra and my partners are Hello, I am Trisha. I study in grade 5. Hello, I am Kakshi and I study in grade 5. We are here to present our idea on Women's Safety Locket. Our project focuses on alerting nearby people if someone is feeling unsafe or is in danger. We live in a developing city like Mumbai, which is also called as a busy city. But when it comes to safety, there is still a lot to go. We have used a touch sensor and buzzer. If any person who is in danger, we touch the bu but we touch the touch sensor and the buzzer will buzz. I am feeling unsafe. Let me touch the touch sensor. Okay, Kashvi, Dia, and Trisha, you can unmute yourself. Yes, you can unmute. Hello. So there was something at the end you said. There was one slogan that you said. The slogan did not have that much energy the way your project had. So can you show that same energy here now? Yes, three, two, one. Nari what was the slogan? Nari Shakti Zindabad. Yes, we need to be a bit more loud. We want you to be a bit more loud. What was the slogan? Hello. Hello. Hello, Trisha, Kashvi, yes. Dia. Sir. Yes, I want you to be a loud and clear. What was the last slogan that you said? Nari Shakti Zindabad. Nari Shakti Zindabad. 
Yes, so you need to be that loud. Yes, very good, very good. Okay. Before going on with the <coughs> questions and answer, I just want you to give a small introduction about yourself, your name, your school, and your grade. <laughs> So hello, I am Trisha Patricia. Um, I study in grade five and I am in JBC and international school. Hello, I am Kashri Gandhi. I study in fifth grade and I am in JBC international school. Okay, I guess Dia has some connectivity issues. Okay, so she might try to rejoin again. Kashvi and Trisha, till that you can answer the questions asked by our audiences. Yes. Okay, so we have the audiences are already ready with their questions, I guess. Okay, for this particular project, I would definitely want suggestions from my audience as this is related to women safety and they have come up with a very good idea. Kashvi, Trisha and Dia. So I would want more suggestions from the audience so that our young minds can add on some better feature to their project or to their product. Yes, Arav. Sir, I have a doubt that uh... Uh, whenever you click uh, the that uh, locket, so it buzzes. So does that uh, command and give notification somewhere else, or just rings there only? No. So basically, this uh, sound, the buzzer sound, it is. Uh, it will attract people, and people will come to your rescue, and yes. it will also send a message to the nearest police station or policeman. So. Okay. okay, so it will not only ring an alarm or a buzzer so that it would attract more number of people, but it will also send notification to the nearest police station that in this particular area, there is some mishap being happening. So, you so can I come. Question. So, if a woman is just clicking the that locket, so uh, wouldn't she even shout and call everybody if they're, they are near and uh, shouting voice is, I think, more louder than the buzzer and uh, then you can call the police but sometimes uh if it's a kidnapping man people tend to cover the mouth so they can't scream so they have so that's why we have included a buzzer okay very good answer kashvi that was really good yes priya It's a very nice project. You should keep the vibration range in control because if it's an old woman, uh, if it's a lot of vibration through buzzer, in order to make more sound, it will, it may hammer, rarely, but yes. And I have one question that usually uh, women, if they are mothers, they are handling their babies maybe in their park. And so by mistakenly, if their child clicks on the button, then the police will come and a lot of misunderstanding can be caused. Right? So the policeman's time would be wasted. So, um, instead of saving other, which are actually true, they will come here when the child uh, by mistake clicked the button. So what can you do for that? Thank you for your question, but we will definitely try to work on this point. Like how can you work on that point? Uh, maybe we can uh, adjust the sensor and uh, um, we can uh, we can also try to put a child lock. Uh, but or uh, we could kind of like I think we will have to look into that. I know it's a tricky. If we we'll keep a child lock, then when the kidnapper will come. The woman's eye will be closed. So how will she open the child lock? It will make an issue either. So do work on it because it's an important point. Right? Yes, Joan de Souza has raised his hand. Yes. Hello, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. 
so i wanted to say like um yeah hello hello yes jo want yes, sir yes so i wanted to say like if you could put uh, like some location tracking thing or something so that would inform their parents or their uh, um family that uh, she is in some trouble or something so that would be even better because you never know what could happen yes, yes. thank you jovan for giving such a wonderful recommendation to our young minds okay so they can definitely work on this particular thing yes you can put on the exact gps location so that the, it would be easy for their parents to track yes yes thank you jovan thank you very much yes i guess arav has something yes yes arav i would recommend instead of you making this a uh, locket you should uh, just make the uh, socket or where the button clicks you can just keep it that so it could be short and, uh, if it is a locket and it, it could be clicked by mistake as priya told so you should uh, just keep the socket and uh, then the a uh, lady can uh, like uh, they carry if they carry purse so they can just stick in uh, stick on to the purse so that would be more nice yes yes so uh... yes kashwi trisha yes yes so you can work on the part what priya has said and if, as well as joan so both of them have given a very good problem statement and a solution and as well as arav's suggestion to your particular project okay thank you arav thank you priya thank you jovan for such a wonderful question and your suggestions based on the project so here's the poll for this particular project project number 8 and this was the last project for the day so stay tuned for the last poll second last poll of the day Okay so this was the last project for the day as i said there were nine projects but due to some technical issue our ninth project presenter is not available but i have guess okay the ninth presenter is not available due to some technical issue so he'll be presenting his project in the coming week so as of now today we have only eight projects so don't leave the meeting everyone because we have one more poll coming up after this particular poll we have a last conclusion poll which will have all the eight projects the list of all the eight projects so you can vote the best project that you have seen in today's event day 3 event of ignited minds expo 2022 is last 10 seconds yes i guess ashwi wants to say something sir i wanted to ask can we choose for our own project or we have to choose for other it's up to you if you think others project are better than yours then definitely you can choose Okay, and if you want to vote your project as well, you can vote that one. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's absolutely fine. Since it is audience votes, so it's up to you. Okay.
Okay, so the poll has ended, and before putting up the last conclusion poll, where you can rate the top project of the day, I'll just summarize all the eight projects what we have seen today. So the first project that was presented by Malik Mehta and David Trivedi was energy saving classroom. Okay, so they had presented an energy saving classroom. Uh, just give me a second, kids. Yes. So the problem statement was electricity wastage while forgetting to switch off the devices when no one's no one is in the room or classroom. Okay, when all the students have left the class as well as the teacher has left the class, sometimes they forget to switch off some particular devices. So they came up with the solution that people counting mechanism to turn off devices in rooms when no one is inside. Okay, so as soon as all the members have entered the classroom, leaves the classroom, the devices turns off automatically. So this can be definitely used for energy saving. The second project was firefighting robot by Samyak Shah and Rachid Bandari. So the problem statement was risk of human lives in fire accidents. Like the firefighters who definitely risk their life to extinguish fire and protect others from fire. So that is definitely risking their life. And the solution to their project is fire extinguishing robot. So instead of a human, you'll have this fire fighting robot or a fire extinguishing robot, which will help the firefighting people so that they do not risk their life too much. The next project was automatic street light by, street light by Kanav Mehta. The problem statement was inconsistency, inconsistency in street lights on and off timings. Like sometimes the street light turns on very early, even when the sunlight is there, the street light turns on, or sometimes it turns off even while there is darkness. So this is inconsistency in street lights, and he came up with the solution. That automatic sensor based on off system, depending on natural lighting. He's taking the data from the lights, the actual natural light, and based on that, he's switching on and off the street lights. Hospital attendant nurse or Insta Care Alert. The project was Insta Care Alert. They named it as Insta Care Alert. So it was the problem statement. What they saw was delay in monitoring patient needs. Delays in monitoring patient needs. Like sometimes if the patient needs to be answered, the patient can just, he just needs to check whether the nurse is in or in a, like nearby to them or not. But the solution what our kids came up with is they have made their very own alerting system for healthcare professionals. They have made a sensor which will detect the touch and based on that, the nurse or the doctor can be alerted. The next project was touchless lift using RFID. The problem statement was spread of germs via elevator buttons. Like if you touch the elevator buttons, there is possibility that the germs on the buttons of elevator can come to your fingers and then it can spread to your body. So he came up with the solution like using the RFID card based touchless elevator. Like you can just scan your card instead of touching the elevator button and you can move to the floor whichever you need. The next project was car security system by Ayush Gothi. Very well explained, very well demonstrated. The problem statement was illegal parking of cars. Like someone, like if, if you have a parking lot and someone else sneaks into your parking lot. So using this particular solution, what Ayush Gothi came up with RFID based parking entry system, like only authorized people 
can enter the parking lot and un unauthorized people or an unauthorized car cannot enter the parking lot mobile theft detection by pratham loda the problem statement was need to keep mobile safe from theft so alarm triggering mobile stand so he came up with an alarm triggering mobile stand if someone sneaks in and tries to take out your mobile phone or tries to steal your mobile from phone from a table or a desk the alarming trick the alarming system would turn on and it would alarm the person whoever has the mobile the last project was women safety women safety by dia dhruv trisha pachisia and trisha pachisia and kashvi gandhi so they have taken a very good problem statement it's the nightmare for most of the women security related issues for girls or women and they came up with a smart solution that is a smart variable for safety and alarming so they have made a locket kind of thing so later on as i said they even come up with variables the other kind of variables they can have a smart watch they can have smart goggles or gears or anything which can be used for alarming and protect them from strangers these were the eight projects of the day 3 ignited minds expo 2022 i'll be posting up the poll for the top project of the day so here is the poll the confusion poll where you can vote the best project of the day and i hope the best project wins energy saving classroom fire fighting robot automatic street light insta care alert touchless lift car security system mobile theft detection and women safety we have 34 participants and 18 have already voted 19 we'll keep it for another minute and then we'll check which project has received the more number of votes the last 10 seconds you can vote for your project whichever you found as interesting and would definitely help the society or you found it very interesting or very good the kids presented really well today the presentation was good the q and a's were also good we want the kids to come up with more projects so this was day 3 of ignited minds expo 2022 we have nine more days to go it would be every friday saturday sunday of the month of feb every weekend of feb that is friday saturday sunday we'll be coming back live next week friday at 5 and we'll have more projects and more fun and interesting projects present made by our kids and they'll be presenting the same on the next friday i guess it's 11th of feb so 11th of feb we'll be having more projects and a better one and they'll definitely have we will put on put on interest Yes, I guess the voting is done. We have the poll has ended, and we have received one winner, and we'll definitely tell the winner's name.
becoming weak. So this is the schedule. Like we are done with fourth, fifth, and sixth of this month. We'll be joining you again on Friday, eleventh of Feb at five. And the other days also, we'll have more number of projects coming up. We'll have ten to eleven projects every weekend. So stay tuned. We'll meet you next week. Thank you for being such a patient listener. and thank you for being very interactive thank you